All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Brought to you by Global, India's premier insurance broker. Good morning. This is the daily morning update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Before we begin, let me, on behalf of all of us here at Bloomberg Quint, wish you a Merry Christmas. May the love and peace of family find its way into all of your homes. Now here's what you need to know. U.S. stock futures rose, erasing earlier losses and the yen paired gains as investors weighed news over the weekend that President Donald Trump has discussed firing Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell as well as the impact of a partial U.S. government shutdown. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin attempted to assure financial markets later that Powell would not be fired following a Bloomberg News report that said that Trump has repeatedly discussed removing him. Meanwhile, the U.S. government shutdown that began at the end of last week is expected to last until late this week and maybe into January. There seems to be no common ground at this point with President Donald Trump unwilling to back down from his demand for billions of dollars in funding to construct a border wall. Not surprising then that U.S. stock markets closed sharply in the red. The Dow and the S&P 500 declined 1.8 and 2% respectively. The Nasdaq dropped as much as 3%. In Asia this morning, Australian stocks were marginally positive, while the Kospi in South Korea was trading with cuts of 0.4%. The Japanese stock market is shot. In other major international news, the death toll from a tsunami triggered by suspected volcanic activity near the Sunda Strait in Indonesia continues to rise as rescuers continue to search for dozens missing in the tourist region. More than 220 people, mostly tourists, are confirmed dead and at least 843 injured and dozens are missing in the two provinces that were hit by waves late on Saturday. On to news from back home. The GST Council met on Saturday and announced a cut in tax rates for 22 goods and services. Seven goods have been taken out of the highest tax bracket of 28%. These include monitors and television screens of up to 32 inches, retreaded tyres and power banks of lithium-ion batteries. For the full list of the changes, do look up the story on the website. The government is considering an additional soft loan of 7,400 crore rupees to sugar mills for creating ethanol capacity under a recently launched scheme. That's a PTI report. Vedanta has said that it will move the Supreme Court to implement the National Green Tribunal's order to restart its copper smelter in Tamil Nadu, which accounts for nearly half of India's output, after the Madras High Court restrained the company from taking any steps to reopen the unit. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs has alleged that the Statutory Auditors of Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services, or ILNFS, acted in a negligent and fraudulent manner and prepared incorrect financial statements of the debt-laden conglomerate. The allegations are based on an interim report that was filed by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Meanwhile, the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation or ONGC board has suggested that it is not the right time to list the firm's overseas investment arm ONGC Videsh on the bourses. With that, it's over to Agam Vakil for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning Agam, how's it looking at the start of this week? Good morning Alex and good morning listeners. Well, the SGX Nifty Futures is indicating a negative opening following continuing weakness in the US markets. But shifting focus to stocks, we will have Fortis Healthcare, which will be in the spotlight after SEBI orders the Singh Brothers and other eight group companies to repay 403 crores to the company itself. The order also states that the Singh Brothers and the above-mentioned entity is not to dispose any assets or divert funds except for payment of the said order, except for meeting day-to-day expenses. Moving on, Bandhan Bank clarifies that the bank is unaware of the news that it is being in talks with HDFC for control of group finance. Chandrasekhar Ghosh, led bank, also stated that it is evaluating various opportunities, but it will not comment on any market speculation. PVR's board has approved raising of 750 crores via Qualified Institutional Placement or Debt in Equity. InfoEdge's arm increases the stake in no paper form solutions to 48.1% by investing another 28 crores and the company said the digital solutions is for educational institutions. In terms of 
Healthcare Global Enterprises and key bulk deals. We have Pavra Investment, which sold 2.1% stake at 198 per share. Sundaram BNP Paribas Mutual Fund, on the other hand, acquired 1.24% stake. In other bulk deals, we also have FM Industries, where Morgan Stanley France has acquired 0.8% in the company at around 560 rupees per share and blackrock india on the other hand sold 1% at the same rate we take vabaga also in focus considering goldman sachs india fund has sold 1.6% stake at around 270 rupees per share now these are just some of the stocks that you can watch out for as we move into trade today but don't forget to go through our morning edition of all you need to know only on bloombergqueen.com Thanks Agam and thank you all for listening in. Once again, here's wishing all of you a very merry Christmas. This is Alex Matthew signing off. Have a lovely day and an amazing week ahead. I hope you enjoyed listening to all you need to know. Did you know that you could listen to this show on the IVM podcast app? On the IVM podcast app along with this we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus says with Cyrus Brocha as the host, listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta, The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Verma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.